Hello and welcome back to Grim and Wim. Today we will be looking into the murder of Susan Berman, a journalist and very prominent author who was found murdered in her home on Christmas Eve in the year 2000. She was shot in the back of her head execution style by a 9mm handgun. And she was only 55 years old and thriving in her field. Her case was cold until about 15 years later when we finally got answers as to who viciously took her life. Before getting into this case, I want to start by discussing more about who Susan was and what her life was like before the senseless crime. Susan Berman was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota on May 18, 1945. She was the only child of Gladys Evans, formerly known as Betty Ewald, who was a traveling dancer, and David Davy Berman. She grew up in Las Vegas with her parents, and Susan had a very interesting childhood, but also a very tragic and sad childhood. Her father, David, was actually a major crime boss um, in the Jewish American crime scene. And Susan didn't actually know about her father's life as a mobster until much later in her life. And she even wrote a memoir about her father's role in organized crime. And this was called Easy Street. The book detailed her life as the daughter of a mobster. When Susan was 12, her father died under mysterious circumstances on an operating table. And all indications are that David died of a heart attack during surgery. A year following his death, Susan's mother then died of an overdose. The death was presumed to be a suicide. Susan grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada, and then later lived in Hollywood, California. She received a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1967 from UCLA, where she met American real estate heir Robert Durst. So remember this name, Robert Durst, because he is going to pop back up again later in the story, and we will talk more about him later. Um, but moving back to Susan, in 1969, she graduated with a Master's of Arts in Journalism from the University of California, Berkeley. Susan wrote two successful memoirs and was also a contributing writer to several magazines, including Cosmopolitan. She also wrote Driver, Give a Soldier a Lift, and Lady Las Vegas. Susan was also gradually paid a total of $4.3 million by the Mafia for her father's interests in casinos and other properties. Berman lived off of the Sunset Strip on Alta Loma Road in West Hollywood and then moved to her final residence in Benedict Canyon, a suburb of Los Angeles. So needless to say, Susan was an intelligent woman. She was quite successful, quite wealthy, and she was working hard as a writer and by all accounts was thriving in her career and was very successful at what she did. Susan's love life was a bit more complicated and a bit more mysterious than her work as an author. Her manager, Niall Brenner, once told the LA Times that many details of Ms. Berman's personal life are unclear and that she had been married once in the 1980s. She married Christopher Margulies and he also went by the nickname Mr. In June 1984, they got married at the Hotel Bel Air. That marriage ended two years later when Christopher died 
of a heroin overdose in 1986. Susan never had children of her own. Um, however, she did consider the son and daughter of one of her ex-boyfriends to be sort of like her adoptive children. And she loved them as if, you know, they were her own. Robert Durst, that man I told you to remember before, um, he was a very important figure in Susan's life. He was actually the one that gave her away at her wedding because, of course, her father had died when she was a child. And so Susan considered Robert to be a very close friend, really like almost like a brother. And little did she know that this man who she considered to be like family really was not what he appeared to be. But before we get more into Robert's character, let's go over the timeline of the case. On the last night of her life, Susan picked up her friend Richard Markey and drove to dinner at the Broadway Deli in Santa Monica. Then the two watched a movie and she dropped him off afterward at about 10.30 p.m. When she got home, she changed into purple sweatpants and a white t-shirt. At some point in the night, her killer showed up at her house, followed her inside, put a nine millimeter pistol to the back of her head, and then pulled the trigger. Susan was dead by the time she hit the floor. It was believed that the killer was likely someone she knew because Susan would never just open the door to someone she didn't know. There was no signs of a break-in and the police found her back door open and the front door was unlocked, which is incredibly suspicious, but definitely led people to believe that this was probably someone that knew her and possibly had a key to where she was living. Because the back door was wide open, Susan's terriers got out and were just running around on the street, which was incredibly dangerous because it was a pretty busy, you know, street. And the neighbors actually saw the dogs get out and notified the police because they knew that Susan would never just let her dogs run around like that. You know, they were like her children, you know, she loved them. And so, um, immediately the neighbors were like, Oh, something might be up. The responding officers found Susan in her bedroom, lying flat on her back with her head and hair resting in a pool of blood. Her purse was on the kitchen table containing all of her credit cards and a small amount of cash. So it didn't seem like robbery was the motive for her murder. In the days following her murder, Susan's landlady was the prime suspect due to her complicated relationship with Susan. Apparently Susan told her friends that this landlady had once threatened her with a gun over back rent and Niall Brenner, who is Susan's manager, he was also a suspect because apparently he had climbed in a window of the bungalow, which had apparently not, was not sealed off when the police left. Um, however, the LAPD, they did eventually clear both the landlady and also the manager. Um, the landlady did have a gun but when she provided the gun to the police, you know, for them to sort of um, rule her out, it was a completely different murder weapon. It was not a match. And so she was cleared and then um, her manager was also cleared. And the detectives then started to focus more on Robert Durst. In the days following her death, Many of Susan's friends and family wouldn't even entertain the idea that Robert Durst had killed Susan. They were very close and by all accounts had a great friendship. And Susan had even sent Robert a thank you note 
for loaning her some money. And in the weeks following her death, Robert was, you know, going around to Susan's loved ones and, you know, commiserating about the loss of his friend. And, you know, it was believable. Everyone felt like, you know, he lost, you know, this person who was like a sister to him. And really, it was all an act. And we're going to learn a little bit more about Robert and his sketchy history with the law. Despite Robert completely denying having anything to do with Susan's murder, some believe that he actually had quite a motive and he may have wanted to silence Susan for some information that she knew. So in 1982, Robert was married to a woman named Kathleen Durst and this was his first wife and she went missing and was never found. And even to this day, you know, the police and investigators, they still have no idea what happened to Kathleen. Kathleen's disappearance, like I said, it was never solved and Robert was never officially charged. And Kathleen Durst was officially declared dead in 2001. Also in 2001, Robert was charged in a killing of a neighbor in Galveston, Texas, but he claimed self-defense and was later found not guilty. Not only does Robert have a very suspicious history, but his brother Douglas Durst also does not buy Robert's claims that he didn't have a hand in his first wife's disappearance or the murder of his friend Susan. In a press statement, Douglas stated that we are relieved and also grateful to everyone who assisted in the arrest of Robert Durst, and we hope he will finally be held accountable for all that he has done. He made this statement following the release of the HBO series, The Jinx, The Life and Deaths of Robert Durst, which reignited the public's interest in Susan's case, as well as finally getting a little bit more information about who Robert Durst was, his sketchy history with the law, and because of this documentary and then also, you know, the renewed interest in Susan's case, Robert Durst was finally arrested in 2015 on a capital murder warrant issued by Los Angeles police in relation to the death of Susan Berman. The 2015 arrest warrant was due to an undisclosed typewritten letter mailed from New York on January 9, 2001 to a West Los Angeles police station titled possible motive for Susan Berman's murder. The letter said that Susan suspected that Robert was involved in Kathleen's disappearance. The letter also claimed that Robert was planning to visit Susan in late December, and that was the same time that she was found murdered in her home. Robert was ultimately convicted of the murder of Susan Berman on September 17th, 2021 and sentenced to life in prison. Two months later, however, he did die in prison. And that is where the story ends for now. Um, tragically, since he did die, we don't have much information about Susan's death and, you know, why he decided to do what he did to what we thought was a friend. And then also what happened to Kathleen, his first wife? You know, we still don't have any idea if she's alive, if she's dead, if she is dead and he killed her, where are her remains? You know, how did he kill her if that is what he did? The HBO documentary and Robert's arrest and later conviction it did give us a lot of answers. However, there are a lot of questions that we may never have answers to. And part of that is because 
Robert is no longer with us to answer those questions or to provide any other insight or clues as to what could have happened to Kathleen. But with all that being said, that's where I'm going to end Susan's story today. And I hope that you enjoyed learning more about Susan Berman's life and then the journey to find justice for her tragic murder. And for more information about this case, I definitely recommend looking into the HBO documentary, um, The Jinx, The Life and Deaths of Robert Durst. It really does take more of a deep dive into her case. Um, and also, it does provide a more thorough analysis of Robert Durst and kind of, you know, more of the person that he was. I personally wanted to focus more of my attention on Susan and her life um, just because the whole reason why I wanted to cover um, both homicide cases and missing persons cases is to really focus on the victims, to share their stories, um, and to provide, you know, information about them to give them hopefully some peace and dignity. Um, and with all that being said, I hope that you did enjoy this video. And if you like this style of video, please like and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. And with all that being said, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. It's goodbye for now, but I hope to haunt you again soon.